Yo, check my crib, MTV Cribs, this is my goat. Yeah, his balls are huge. And his dick, look, literally comes out the middle of his stomach. You see that? It looks like a predator, like the predator. But I love him, and the neighbors love him. The only way that I could legally have this goat is if I got my house redistricted as a uh, agricultural plot, not a residential plot. Woo, you really chewing on me, boy. My full name is Josef Franz Lemberger. I was named after the last king of Austria to ever exist. I go by Sepp. I remember writing it with my finger in the blue carpet and being like, Sepp, that's my name, Sepp, 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 Sepp. My parents were very hands off. It wasn't that they weren't like in love with me or anything like that. It took care of me. They made sure to give me everything. Um, I needed like, but to make my own decisions, to form my own personality, and to really find my motivations, that was very hands off. They really allowed me to f to shape the person I want to be. My dad's a sculptor. He's a woodworker. He chose to go to trade school in Austria, and then took all that knowledge and came to the states. My mom is a painter. She went to the School of the Art Institute in Chicago, which is the oldest art institute in America. Their practice together was the Houston International Festival, which was a festival to highlight cultures from all over the world. They made exhibits for people to go in and learn about the cultures. Then they would also build like a giant pirate ship or 140 feet worth of the Great Wall of China and my dad got to build that shit and then my mom got to paint it. Right now I'm in uh, Mark Flood's Army of the Damned. Mark Flood's like a prolific painter from Houston. He's 60 years old and he's had access to the internet for over 30 years. But think about us. Our whole lifetime we've been influenced by the internet. Someone who's 60 years old really hasn't been influenced that much by the internet. He's an adult looking over like all this newfound culture and just heavily critiquing it. Yeah, I'm a studio assistant, I'm a part of his damn army. Let like, entertain his ass. Organize paintings, wrap paintings, get them ready to send out to London. We cut up the billboards because he does a lot of collage work. Organize his studio. Sometimes we just like, we just hang out and just get to talk. Artists I've worked with in the past, there's not a lot of like free time just to get to know one another. And it was, it's really cool to do that. He's one of the only contemporary painters to get famous and not live in New York. It is crazy that he did it with only living in Houston, Texas still. I call myself a social sculptor. I'm interested in how humans relate to spaces and how they occupy the spaces and how they manipulate those spaces. I take human beings, much like mediums of art that have pluses and negatives, and I bring them together and I make them work in the most efficient way towards an end goal, which is either a concert, pop-up shop, skate jam, fashion show, whatever. I was working with this artist named uh, Rick Glaciers. He, he was like, let's do a concert. I'm like, well, I happen to have this plot of land donated to my family. He's like, yeah, let's fucking do it. And so I, I threw a concert. I had Tooth Witch doing tattoos out the back of a truck. Um, I, I built a little skate park out of recycled doors in the field. Um, I had like three clothing vendors. We had music and food with liquid light projections done by Connor Mizell, which is like one of the most impressive things to ever see. Um, so we did fucking sour candy and it woke everyone the fuck up they were like this is how we party this is how we throw concerts this new big body uh, i got up maserati crash that bitch and i bought a bugatti yeah it started an era of professionality in my career it connected a lot of people i saw people doing things because of that show. Gio was already doing Don't Die. I started on Don't Die 2. Don't Die 2 is the best. As proclaimed by Gio, not just because I was there and like Orange Grove did the stage and the sound and the lights. Is Orange Grove your... Production company. Yeah, it is my unofficially unlicensed 
production company that I own and operate. We mostly do concerts. Uh, we mostly do our own concerts, but sometimes like Richmond Studios has reached out to us to uh, do some stuff for them. What's interesting about Houston is the representation. It's not fucking there. Like, it's like, it's such a big place that, and so much is going on, and so much is just sliding under people's radar. But it has so much money. I think that's the only reason why art is semi-represented as, but it's not represented as well as it could be. I don't know what the solution is to Houston being represented as an arts uh, center. A lot of the old folks have said that it's the youth in Houston and it's just a matter of young people wanting to be business professional but not forgetting who they are and not losing the touch of the city. The city made them who they are. The people around them made them who they are. If I leave Houston, I know that I'm gonna come back one day and it's gonna be totally different. And I take so much inspiration from it, I still would want to help it. And I still wanna be a part of it. And I still wanna be in love with the city because I am, like I just truly am, like I can't get over that.